to talk. I kind of want to just I listen know, to that. I, know. I I so the first so that's the second time I think we've played that for these conversations, and uh, uh, I didn't realize it was in English the first time. And it's oh yeah, it's, it's in English now. Well, it always was. I just realized. That. <laughs> <laughs> It always was. It always shall be, actually. I don't, always, I don't know. <laughs> As they say, it is what it is. <laughs> but, you know, uh, obviously it's got the, that Russian, the Russian hym- hymnal tones, right? I yeah. mean, I, I, you know, there are, these kids aren't old enough to remember John Paul II's funeral. But I remember waking up early. It was like... 4 a.m. that they started the funeral oh, yeah. because it was, you know, it's, Italian it's, time. It's, yeah. And uh, I remember when all the Greek uh, bishops and priests went up and chanted around oh, and, yeah. and were, of course, you know, wafting incense everywhere. Yeah. And and the just distinction between their chant yeah. and anything, any chant that was happening in the West was just so strong. Yeah. And I remember so many people who didn't know anything about like Eastern Christianity we were like, what the heck was that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wake up, people. That was that was something to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was it was a very interesting moment because so many people watched it, and uh, I think it was an introduction to Christ- Eastern Christianity that yeah. people never expected. Yeah, and and, and I, I think just the, also the unity. I mean, there was right. there was a lot of representation from the East. Yeah. There was. Um, that was. I think that was the first year after I became Catholic. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Wow. I, I think... Yeah, it was. It was. It was my freshman year in college. I don't remember if the Archbishop of Canterbury came. Like, crazy ecumenical stuff yeah. was happening there. I mean, insane stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, we're going to get through um, the first, what, seven chapters? I think so, yeah. Of the uh, Ivan... Yep. First seven chapters of Ivan. Um, uh, up through the second interview with Smerdyakov. Yes. And, uh, and then we've hit the 700 mark, um, which means that we have less than 150 pages left, which is... Oh, for those of you who are still with us... Sweet. Yeah, you, can you, almost, you can almost taste the end of... Uh, you can almost taste the kvass. Yeah, the kvass. Whatever that is. It's, you, can, you can smell it simmering in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm not sure it simmers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... It's, whatever it is. <laughs> it's, whatever it's doing. Yeah. It's doing something. In the myoda, the mead. Yeah. So, just thinking about that. The Abbey Luncheon, right? That yes. Which which? Uh, what was the title of that chapter? Uh, something uh, ordeal. The, the scandalous scene. The scandalous scene. That was it, right? The scandalous scene. Yeah. It, it wasn't yeah. even about like a meal because it really wasn't a meal. It was just a yeah. disaster. <laughs> it was just. Yeah, it was buffoonery. It was total buffoonery. Unfortunately, there's no more buffoonery because the buffoon yeah. has died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So so. Uh, um, I, I don't know if, if if this is deliberate, but in these seven chapters, I was noticing a lot of reference back to earlier parts of the the book, mm-hmm. uh, and and some of it I thought was somewhat at least at least for me, and maybe it's because once I kind of go down a rabbit hole, I don't see it as a rabbit hole. I just see it as like the only highway in town, <laughs> and so everything everything else sort of fades away. Yeah. Um. So it seems maybe more obvious to me because I'm sort of prone to esoteric sort of stuff. Um, yeah, but it, it's probably, you'd probably but, be enlightening a lot of people, including myself. But, but there, so there was a, so we're, I, the, the reason I, I mentioned that is I'm going to be going back, at least I, I'm hoping to go back to that earlier um, um, sort of exchange in the, in the um, elder's cottage. And then even before that, the description of what an elder is, mm-hmm. Um, I think this is we're slowly starting to see uh, a um, a return to those to those um, beginnings where you have here's a description I th- I think they even you know at the very beginning of the book here's a description of this son this son this son this son the right. dad this person yada yada and then here at the end you have whole you have whole books dedicated to right. these people and I think it's it's kind of playing out that that here's what that person was and maybe you can say was but here's what they've become or what sort of their 
the 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 Karamazov drama played out, which is in some ways is the same drama played out in each of them, and so it's kind of always going back to that that origin and sort of mm-hmm. taking them from that beginning to to this, as Dimitri says in in the Hymn of Secret, into a new man. Mm-hmm. So there there's an idea that you come forth from what you were. At what, yeah. I think it's uh, Maria Montessori's quote. And no, but I think she's quoting somebody ancient, um, where she says, "Nietzsche." No, I don't think it's Nietzsche. Although I, I, I bet they have a lot in common, <laughs> and a lot not in common. But uh, it's it's that the uh, the boy is the mother of the man, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. The boy gives birth to the man, yeah. right? and so there's this idea that um, the child, what they were, and even further back, what they're father was right and their mother was mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. what they are in fact R- Rakitin or Rakitin or whatever his name is mm-hmm. says that about Alyosha he says he says I've been watching you you're a Karamazov through and through you're a saint from your mother yeah. and you're a yeah. sensualist from your father right right and 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 maybe that's what's happening here so the, the beginning of the book explaining uh yeah then this kid was born and dad dumped him and yes. then these kids were born and dad dumped them. Yeah. And then this kid was born and dad never admitted that he was his kid. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and it's all about sort of uh, what they came forth from and that what they have become at this point is it's never divorced from that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, and I I don't I the way I'm reading it is he he Dostoevsky is intentionally trying to um, recall earlier parts of of the book so rather than thinking okay we can leave the past behind and and we're just Mm -hmm. sort of move linearly through through history through time it's kind of um everything that has happened before is you know present in this conversation that alyosha is having with dimitri or Mm -hmm. in this conversation that alyosha is having with grushenko so so i think it's it's this um it's important to like be flipping back and forth because mm-hmm. I think what he's what he Dostoevsky is intentionally doing is he's intentionally trying to blur the distinction between the present and the past. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. That sort of everything's all always recapitulated, re- reenacted, redone, um, made made present. Like I think we were talking about this maybe the last time or two times. Kind of like the mass in a sense that right. that, that the sacrifice is brought back, um, or maybe better put, we're brought back. To it, to, to, um, to its 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 reality, yeah. its occurrence, yeah, um, or its occurring. Yeah, maybe. so maybe rather than it it becomes present to us, we become present to it. Right. Yeah. Um, but so I don't know. So so I, I think it's there. There's there's a lot of a lot of that I think going on here. But I could just be over interpreting. Probably um, not. But this okay. Is so Dostoevsky. so. Uh, this book begins with a conversation that uh, Alyosha and Grushinka uh-huh. have. Uh-huh. Um, and Maximushka. Maxim- <laughs> who was uh, Maximov, right? Maximov, right. Yeah. Maximushka just means my little Maximov. Yeah, my little. <laughs> Which is really funny that she calls him that because he's just this old sort of like weirdo. Not weirdo in a weird, creepy sense, although kind of. Um, as happened in the in the orgy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scenes when he was dancing with the girls. Yeah, but uh, more just a just like a I don't know, just like a simple old man who doesn't really have anybody to take care of him. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Grushenka takes care of him, which 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 is, is is it's it's something about her transformation, which Dostoevsky begins his whole book by talking about. Um, he says uh, he's talking about. Uh, Alyosha seeing her she's very much changed thinner and a little sallow though she had her, for the past fortnight been well enough to go out but to Alyosha her face was even more attractive than before and he liked to meet her eyes when he when he went into her a look of firmness and intelligent purpose had developed in her face there were signs of spiritual transformation in her and a steadfast fine and humble determination that nothing could shake could be discerned, discerned in her and as and he ends it, there was there was scarcely a trace yeah. of her former frivolity. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, and, and so there's this like total transformation that takes place in her. We already know there's a total transformation in, in Dimitri. In fact, his t- transformation is so total, Grushenka doesn't understand it, yeah. even though she herself is transformed. Right. And by, by him, right? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. he's transformed by her. She's transformed by him. Um, and yet she doesn't understand how far his transformation has gone. And his, the, his there, you, you said was Dimitri. Yeah, 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 yeah. I almost said Mitya, but yeah. that might confuse things. Yeah. So, <laughs> Unless you've been following along. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the, um, so then this, so on 649, mm-hmm. uh, we can just keep the, keep the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is where it, I think it comes out that she doesn't understand. Yeah, right. Um, so, uh, here, towards the bottom there, is that what you had in mind? Yep. Um, so, uh, yes, that's perhaps the strongest evidence against him. So, they're, they're kind of talking about, is, is, is Dimitri innocent or not? And um, Grushinka goes on to say, to say this. Um, and as for Mitya's being mad, he certainly seems like it now. Okay, so, so can we stop there for a second? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just this idea of madness, which is huge in Dostoevsky, yeah. right? Um, and and also, you know, the great quote from St. Anthony of the Desert, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which yeah. says something along the lines of, there will be a time when men will go mad, and they will come, and they will grab you, and they'll throttle you, and they'll say, you are mad because you are not like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's this question of, what is madness? Yeah. And what is Christianity? And what is, is, is Christianity yeah. madness? Or is the world mad? Right. And Christianity is the only true yeah. sanity. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. And this um, is a huge theme of Dostoevsky. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, to to just another example of that that thesis. Uh, Plato's cave, when the the guy mm-hmm. leaves the cave, sees sees the sun, goes back into the cave, and he he because he spent so long out of the cave, he can't understand what's happening in the cave. I mean, it, he's not good at it anymore. In the sense, yeah. he, he 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 can't. He's awkward down in the cave. Um, he goes to the parties and he's this you know weirdo, and he can't get along. He can't you know say the the one liners, and he just he just is always thinking about. He doesn't know how to point out the shadows properly. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just sort of you know caught up thinking about Latin and Greek and the classics. The and classics. Like, yeah, <laughs> going back to yeah. Kolya. Exactly. And so so then. Um, but 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 someone someone is someone is um, someone is mad. Someone is, you know, right. Um, upside down, if you will. Someone's right. living in in the in the in the cave uh, or in the dark or however you want to put it. Right. Um, and 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 uh, so I think they're this theme. But they both they both from the other person's perspective look like the other person. Mm-hmm. Um, is yeah so yeah but 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 of course the the the, uh, so, the madness in him is more important in some sense here because number one Grushenka really is convinced that he is yeah. and number two if they can convince the judge and yeah. the jury that he is yeah then he he can he can be given a light sentence or no sentence yeah right? yeah I don't, I don't want to jump too far ahead but I think this is I'll, I'll mention this, and we'll, we can come back to it because it comes up again later, a bit stronger. Okay. But uh, here is a thought that I had. Uh, so the, the 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 one hope to save Dimitri is to say that he's mad. Therefore, he can't be held responsible for mm-hmm. his actions because he's mad. But what Dimitri goes on to say in in the him and a secret chapter is, no, I am. It's not that I want to get off the hook and and not be respons- held responsible. I want to be held. Re- my madness is sort of my wanting to be held responsible right. for this. Right. So rather than madness being a way of saying, okay, you, it's kind of like a, a free hall pass. <laughs> like you could do whatever you want because you're just you know bonkers. Yeah. You're nuts. Right. right. So you can go kill whoever you want. And, right. And this is this is what in the next chapter. Uh, Madame Holokov says uh, um, aberration. Oh, yeah, it's the aberration. Oh, yeah. Right? Aberration, and, yeah. And uh, this is 658. Um, ab- uh, in, in the legal sense, she's like, what's aberration? In the legal sense, for, you know, towards the bottom there. Yep. An aberration in which everything is pardonable, right? So everything is excusable. Everything's permissible. Everything's lawful. Whatever you do, <laughs> yeah, you will be acquitted at once. 
And and so I was thinking that that this sort of craziness, this sort of aberration, and and the effects it has is basically um, like legal atheism. It, uh-huh. It's like it, it it has the same consequences, the same effect, the same like even like maybe hopes um, to to say like if you if you are like this, then there is no there is no law, there is no right, right? and right. so th- so sort of the hope is that everyone is like that. Everyone it just sort of lives without any any um, responsibility for anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the way to do that is just to, to, to live in this one sort of madness. Uh-huh. Um, but what's weird is that Dimitri, um, whether he, he is crazy or not, he doesn't want that right, right? So, which i think i i take that to be kind of like a modus tollens as a sign of like his his actually believing that that god and he, i mean he does admit it pretty explicitly but god does exist yeah. has to exist yeah must exist and he, and he even says i love god yeah which he said before right on his way to mcrow yeah 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 i mean he was uh he was he was praying to him and, and saying yeah. how much he loved him right yeah um yeah, no, I think I think this is interesting. So, so the, the actual madness of Dimitri is one where he doesn't say, "I don't, I don't need to be. Re- I'm not responsible for what I do," but more, I'm res- I am, I'm more responsible for what I do, and in fact, I'm responsible for everything. Yeah, right? and 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 this is this is Zosima madness. This is Markle madness, right? This yeah. is uh, this is 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 sort of the Dostoevskian picture. Of sanctity, yeah, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's and it's it's something that the courts cannot make sense out of, or right. or I mean, Madam Holokov can't make any sense out of it. Right. Grushinka has a hard time making sense out of it, even even, even though she is a transformed yeah. person, right? Or, or I love how <laughs> I love how Madam Holokov refers to her. Oh, uh, at the bottom of six fifty three, uh, she. Uh, at that woman's, at that woman's uh, behest, I guess she was talking about. Yeah. It's she's that brought him that sh- that has brought him to ruin, ru- brought ruin on everyone. I know nothing about it though. They say she's become a saint, though it's rather late in the day. She had better have done it before. <laughs> what use is it now? <laughs> I mean, in some sense, she's saying, you know, yeah, she could have maybe saved him if she was a saint before, um, but I don't think she quite understands what sanctity is. And 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 the fact that in a sense, I mean, I don't. Know, uh, it's this sounds almost cliche, but it's it's not in my mind at all. That that love is never too late, right? That yeah. it's that it's, it is it is like the culmination of the present moment. Yeah. Is it somewhere in scripture? Maybe it's the Psalms. Maybe it's the Song of Songs. Late have I late have I loved. No, that's Augustine. Augustine. <laughs> Second scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> the fathers. Okay, the fathers. The father. which, which the Eastern guys, well, uh, except maybe not Augustine. But yeah, yeah. They, although some of them love him too. The Easterners would, would love you for bringing up the fathers here, right? Yeah. But, it, but you should really bring up Isaac the Syrian, right? <laughs> which comes up again. I know. Which means we got to get that book. Very, out. very intentionally too. Yeah. We've and got that's in the to third get... interview though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm jumping ahead. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. But but we've got to read that book. We've got to read that book. I mean, uh, doesn't I think Angelus has Brother Angelus has a copy of it. I think I think so. Maybe he could run it over. Wink, wink. Get it? (laughs) Because he's probably running while he's listening to this. (laughs) (laughs) Which, which, very interestingly, he could hear this, come and run it over in in the next five minutes that he hears it. But it's actually like days later. Yeah. The weird time travel that happens here. So, so you have, so you have this, uh, this, this intro. So, we we saw the experience that Dimitri had of the dream and the effect that this dream of the babe right. had on him. Right. Um, and it, and w- what's interesting is he treats it not as as a dream. So, so I think this is this is important. It's not as if, oh, that was just a dream. Uh, it's it's almost as, as if. The dream was more real to him than, than reality. The the, the dream yeah. is is like the revelation of the meaning of reality. Yeah, right? it's and, it's it's a peek into the heart of being. Right. It, but this is, uh, and and I just thought of this as you were saying that this is what Dostoevsky said at the very introduction to this whole book when he said, uh, you know, there's two plots. 
Um, yeah. And 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 I, I think it was the uh, maybe it was a translator's note that said, you know, uh, what is fiction and what is nonfiction, or maybe that was just you. I, I wrote about that. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but 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 so so is this a story? Is this just yeah. a story that we're reading, or is this a glimpse into reality? Right. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I think I think that real literature, true literature, is yeah. that which takes reality yeah. and shines a light on it. See, that that's yeah, that's exactly where I was where I was going with this. Is that, oh, that okay. you, that is something you <laughs> I stole you, your no, thunder no, here. No, 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 it's not, no we're, we're, we're a single storm. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> this is, no, no, I, I, I'll quote there, you. There's a single front that's moving through. No, I think this is what, I think this is what you're trying to say. No, I'm not going to find it in, in time. Uh, what you really want to say is what Mitya says um, about uh, Grushenka, uh, that you have taken my soul into your soul. <laughs> And ultimately, we've become one. Yeah, yeah but not, not not quite that <laughs> sincere. I mean, it's sincere. Don't get me wrong. No, it's true though. It's <laughs> true. It, it is. is true. It is. But but I I, I so I, I think the um, this this dream is more real to him than anything else, and, and that it it's what uh, orients his his outlook on life. But but maybe um, I, I I know you want to say something. I keep interrupting. No. no, no, no. <laughs> But maybe you don't want to say it's more real to him. Maybe you just want to say it's more real, full stop. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like he. It's. I mean, in some sense, it's personal to him, right? But but it's not like it's not the one reality that we all constitute. Right. That it that 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 is now, in a sense, recreating him right. into a new man. Right. Right. And and so so I yeah uh, yeah meant that too. Yeah, but the, and I and I think I think Dostoevsky, although I don't know if he has this specifically with the um, with the with the dream, but but this might be in the background on six seventy two. Okay, when when Dmitri and Alyosha are speaking with each other, um, the, the the him in a secret chapter, um, and Dmitri says that he's sorry to lose God, mm-hmm. and and. Alyosha says, well, what do you mean you're sorry to lose God? And he goes on to say, imagine inside, in the nerves, in the head, that is, these nerves uh, are there in the brain. Damn them. They are sort of little, they have, there are sort of little tails, the little tails of those nerves. And as soon as they begin quivering, that is, you see, I look at something with my eyes and yada, yada. And he goes on, he sort of like talks about like, Everything that I see, everything that I hear, mm-hmm. everything that I think, everything that I feel, um, everything that I desire—it's just chemistry, right? I mean, it's right. Just, this is just this is just chemistry. It's not as if there's a soul here. And then he goes to say, Rakitin explained it all to me yesterday, brother. <laughs> Rakitin's behind this, right? And and this was something he had yes he came to yesterday, right? This idea, this idea of you know all all of his. Um, his approach to reality, so to speak, yeah. is through biochemistry and and, yeah. um, and in this in this reductive sense, and but yet a page or two later, it becomes just incredibly clear that that's not Dimitri's view of himself no. or of the world. No, um, and and I think one way one way to interpret this this dream of D- Dimitri's is to say, oh, it's just that's just you know a. a chemical you know happenings i don't know enough of biology to tell you right. anything about what's going on there <laughs> but it's just something that's going on in the brain uh because you you know had you know bad uh bad salmon bad kvass yeah, bad kvass <laughs> yeah, yeah a little upset a little upset sour kvass and, uh, <laughs> uh and 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 now th- there's it's not necessarily i think what's going on is that you have to deny that you have mm-hmm. to deny biochemistry in order to believe in God, I don't think that's what's going on. I think it's just he's just what what something is going to take the primary interpretive the by the primary I mean like the the fundamental the first interpretive stance on reality, um, and I think what what Dimitri seems to to just cannot give up is that the babe yeah. and the babe's suffering is more real right. to him. And his responsibility for the babe's suffering is more real to him than any sort of tales on the nerves in his brain. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, because... And, it's, it, and that's not to say, like, oh, I, I, I therefore don't believe that there are 
tails right. and nerves in my brain and what have you. Right. Um, it's just this is this is um, this is more real. So I have to understand the tails and on the. Br- I mean, he, does, he doesn't get into this. Tolstoy is not worried about this question. I think in great detail. But, right. Um, yeah. It's, so he's not saying, oh, you but have to. What he's worried about is that the mystery of being itself is in. I don't want to say transcends that um, because then then it seems like it has something not to do with that in a Cartesian right. sort of yeah. sense. It doesn't transcend it, but it's something that is, uh, the explanation of it is deeper yeah. than that. Right. Yeah, do you see the world first as a biochemist, and so you understand love in terms of biochemistry, or do you understand biochemistry in terms of love? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you understand biochemistry in terms of the soul and me being responsible to everyone and human freedom? Right. Or do you flip it the other way and say, no, 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 biochemistry is more, more well-known to me. It's more certain to me. Um, it's, it makes more sense. I, I have more verification in my daily experiences of tails in the nervous system. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Go yeah, but I, right. I, and, I, and, I, and I think this is a tendency that we, we have uh, just as Catholics that we— we take love and we put it into a category that we think we understand better. Yeah. Like love is a virtue. And so here's what a virtue is. There are a bunch of different virtues. Love yeah. is one of those virtues. Right. Um, and, and that is stuff I've taught before. Um, and now uh, I would love to be sit in my class a few years ago and say, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. What do you mean when you say love? Like, yeah. is it really just a virtue by which you will something? Or is it? Is it being right, yeah. and and if it's being, then you can't categorize it, right? It's yeah. it's it is it is what makes category possible. Tra- it's trans categorical. Yeah, it's trans categorical, right? And, and I think, in, in a sense, that's what's going on here. So this 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 scientific explanation that happens in six seventy two, um, that that he's that he's getting where he says, and he says here at the bottom of that paragraph, a new man's arising. Yeah. And that it, I understand, and yet I'm sorry to lose God. And yeah, this is the socialist new. Yeah, man, it's like right? the socialist, sci- scientistic, the, um, right. the, the 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 sort of the new man of the, the new science. Yeah, um, man looks past his projection of God that he has created himself, and he finally, in in a very Nietzschean sense, right, takes yeah. the role of God himself, yeah. which is what he writes. I wrote deserves. Nietzsche on the margin. Right oh, there. did you really? Yeah. Yeah, See, but, once but, again, our, then, but, souls, and this, our souls. And this specifically is why I wrote Nietzsche. So that idea. But then, he, I mean, this is this is incredible that Dostoevsky pulls this out. Uh, after Years that, before, ne- decades before decades, Nietzsche. Decades right? before Nietzsche. Yeah. And yet, I am sorry to lose God. Right. So, so Dimitri, you know, saying, yeah, this, this, this is great. But I'm sorry also to lose God. Yeah. So, so he realizes there's something significant that w- we are losing when we when we do hold this view of the new man through the new science. Right. Um, and Nietzsche admits that too. I, I meant to bring the passage of the madman in um, the gay science uh-huh. where he talks about God is dead, God is dead, we've killed them. And the guy that, that's shouting this, is it's sort of a lament. It's not exactly a, 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 it's an not all a triumphant, happy, yeah, triumphant. I mean, it, there's, a type a moment. Of, there's a type of triumph, <laughs> but there's also um, just as much a lament because he goes on to say, how can we wash the blood from our hands now? Like <laughs> what, what rituals, what ceremonies um, can we, can we have? What sacrifices can we make to like atone for, for what we've done? Yeah. Cause there is nothing. Yeah. Cause right? we've already, we've, we've lost that whole realm of being. Right? Exactly. Because yeah. we've rejected, we've yeah. rejected divinity. A- anything, anything transcendent. Yeah. Um, we've gotten rid of anything beyond. And yeah. so there's nothing to wash our hands with or to purify or cleanse ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so you just have to, you have to, as, as, as I think this book is trying to say, you have to just, if that's the case, you just have to bear, bear that you're a murderer and sleep well at night. And Rakitin says, look, or no, no uh, Smedrikov, we're actually, it's probably in the second interview, so it's okay. He says, <laughs> you're not going to get caught for this. Don't worry. Or maybe it's the third. So we haven't given too much I think away, it's but, the third. But, but, but he tries to say, why are you so worried? You're not yeah. going to get stuck with this yeah but it's not that he's going to get dimitri's or actually this is ivan ivan is not worried that he's going to get caught he's he his concern is something deeper it's, yeah it's, that he has done that he, wrong. he he caught himself that he's right? responsible that he knows that he <laughs> is the wrongdoer and he can't just give that up yeah that's the great nietzschean struggle is can we ever just say 
screw morality. I don't care about it. Right. And I, I think what what uh, Don Sviatsky is saying is, no, it's never possible to live a happy, fulfilled life by just saying, screw morality. I'm just going to do what I will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it, the conversation actually starts on the page before that where he says, uh, he says, the trial's tomorrow. Are you so hopeless, brother? He said, oh, you mean the trial? Uh, he's like, he's like, I was hopeless, not because of the trial, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was hopeless because of ethics and science, right? Yeah. So it starts yeah. there, right? And that's, that's when he starts uh, really asking the question of, like, the loss of God. Yeah. I, I do, before we move on, I do have to point out, though, at the top of 672, I knew you'd be, I knew you'd be really happy, right? Uh, the Karamazovs are not blackguards, but... Philosophers. philosophers for all true Russians are philosophers. Oh, now, yeah. now I don't. Now you you know the logical like switch around. Is it possible then to say that all true philosophers are Russians? You care about the, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> if if all true Russians are philosophers, all true Russians are philosophers. It doesn't necessarily hold that, that all philosophers, philosophers are Russians. No, no. but so, some philosophers are Russians. Sorry to say, <laughs> you can't just claim Russian Russian yeah. uh, Russian nationality just by being um, unless a you, unless you can claim that all Karamazovs are philosophers, <laughs> or all philosophers are Karamazovs. Yeah, and then we're all Karamazovs. Yeah, and then that turns out that we're all <laughs> we're all Russians. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you, there's a way, but you, what would you, my dad think of me wishing that I was a Russian? He would, he would, he would he'd be crying if he heard this. <laughs> <laughs> he would also be mad that the poles are are uh, greedy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's just, greedy poles. It's kind of a twisted book for your. your yeah, kids. yeah, you know, I I, I don't like the poles in this. I mean, I, I there's probably they're probably the only two bad poles out of there out yeah. there that they're talking about I here. Right? I mean, two in on. history, two in history, and they're probably like only half pole. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but he, so here's another here's another interest. So this is the same page six seventy two. Yeah. Towards the bottom. Um. So he ends. I'm sorry to lose God. Um, and Alyosha says, oh, that's a good thing anyway, that you're sorry to lose God. <laughs> Alyosha is so sincere. Uh, you know, that I'm sorry to lose God. It's chemistry, brother. Chemistry. So he goes back to the, the Rakit point, right? Um, There's no help for it. Your reverence, you must make way for chemistry. And Rakit does dislike God. Um, he goes on and he's, he, has, he sort of rehashes this conversation he had with Rakit. Um, um, yeah, okay. Skip to the very end there. But what will become of men then? That is, men once once they've they've given up given up on God. What will become of men then? I asked him. Without God, an immortal life. All things are lawful then. They can do what they like. Didn't you know? He said, laughing. A clever man can do what he likes. He said. A clever man knows his way about. But you've put your foot in it, committing a murder, and now you are rotting in prison. Right? And he, goes, he said that to my face. Right? But I, I thought this was, was significant that he says a clever man can, 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 can do what he likes. He can get away with it. Yeah. Um, and w- this is what, what's, this what is I said. This is crime and punishment, the, the, by the way. And when I said the ra- like going down the rabbit hole, it seems obvious. But I was, I was thinking That's who, the who, ref- who was referred to as a clever man? It was Ivan, right? By Smerdjikov. By Smerdjikov, yeah. right? And he says yeah. – he says, you know, it's always worthwhile speaking to a clever man. And yeah. this comes up again later yeah, significantly. It yes. It's yes. a significant pa- like 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 saying. Yeah. Um, and so the fact that Ivan is referred to as the clever man and here it's it's No, he's not the clever man because he screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a clever man would have gotten away with it. Well, well, right. I, I'm so so Dimitri's not the clever man. Right, right. Oh, Ivan, Ivan. Okay. Yeah, Ivan, yeah, I think yeah, you're right, you're is, right. is 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 the well, I don't want to give too much away because it's the next. But most people that are listening to this have probably already finished the book. Yeah, because we're still behind. Yeah, <laughs> but but the clever man, I think, is the one that that could commit the murder and get away with it. Right, right. Um, but as we're as we're going to see, the clever man um, can't get away with it. Yeah, there's a point though where he says this uh, doesn't. I don't remember where he says this, but he says something. I thought it was Dimitri that said, "Yeah, and everything everything is as lawful." He's like, "That's." That's just all hogwash. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so even though he says like, yeah, the, there's the tales of the nerves, and 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 you know everything's lawful. He says it's crap. It's all crap. And and that pig, uh, Rakitin, is the one who's saying it, and therefore he's a loser. So so here's one spot. I mean, I'm sure there's um, uh, there's others. Uh, bottom of six seventy six. Um, that's the uh, or here. 
Only how is he going to be good without God? That's the question. I always come back to that. For whom is man going to love then? To whom will he be thankful? To whom will he sing the hymn? Rakitin laughs. Rakitin says that one can love humanity without God, while only a sniveling idiot can maintain that. <laughs> I can't understand it. Life's easy for Rakitin. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, that's the, that was the line I was thinking of. Only a sniveling idiot can maintain that. Um, and, and the way that Dimitri says it, it's, it's you know, he, it, it, at the beginning of his conversation with Alyosha, it seems like he's convinced of everything is lawful, you know, and this is all coming from Ivan. From, yeah, and you, remember, and you remember at the very beginning, the, the, the conversation uh, with, with Zosima, and then in, in there, it comes up, oh, Ivan wrote this article. Right. And in the article, it said, without God, all is permissible. And then Dimitri very awkwardly is like, oh, uh, you said without God, all, all things are lawful. And then he said, I'll remember that. Yeah. Or, I don't know yeah, if you yeah. remember that. Yeah, I do part. remember that. Yeah. And then he like sits back down and everyone's like, what the hell just yeah, happened? Yeah. Why did you? <laughs> it sounds like more evidence against him, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but it seems like he has remembered that he's thought about it and he's dismissed it yeah. as as yeah. as dumb, right? Yeah. Um, and it, this this part right above that though, I mean, can we spend some time on these two pages right yeah. here? Yeah, six seventy five, six seventy six. Yeah, I mean, look at look at what my six seventy five looks like. I know, mine too, mine yeah, too. I mean, all over the place. It's just uh, all under one. But but before we get to six seventy five, which I might never get out of, uh, <laughs> let's do six seventy six. Okay. He says. Uh, well, he says this beautiful thing about existing, right? And the mystery of yeah. being, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, let me just quote that, and yeah. then I get to what I really want to get to. Although, maybe this is what I really want to get to. <laughs> he, says, um, he says he wants to live. Life is full. There is life even underground, right? And this is the big point, right? The, the, the hymn underground to God, which he was just talking about on the page before, which we'll yeah. go to, right? He says, I want to live now. Do you know, uh, he says, I'm not afraid of it now. Uh, what is he not afraid of? Suffering. Oh, what is suffering? Yeah. I'm not afraid of it, even if it were beyond reckoning. I'm not afraid of it now. I was afraid of it before. Do you know perhaps I won't answer at the trial at all? Who did that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and I seem to have such strength in me now that I think I could stand anything, any suffering, only to be able to say and to repeat to myself every moment, I exist. In thousands of agonies, I exist. I'm tormented on the rack, I, but I exist. So that's the meaning of suffering there. Yeah. Though I sit alone in a pillar, I exist. I see the sun. And if I don't see the sun, I know it's there. That This is C.S. Lewis. By the way, this is the, the, um, the silver chair. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the conversation with the witch. Yeah. And uh, uh, Puddle Globe. Yeah. And, uh, the Lady of the Green Girdle. Right? Um, but anyway, I see, if, I, if I don't see the sun, I know it's there. And there's a whole life in that. In knowing that the sun is there. Alyosha, my angel, all these philosophers are the death of me. Damn them, brother Ivan. And, and so, so first of all, this, this, this idea of being like uh, that, that, that suffering is nothing to fear as long as you be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then he talks about Ivan, and, and Alyosha picks up on that, right? Because yeah. he's worried about Ivan coming to him and what's going on between yeah. them and this right. great secret that Grushenko said that they have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says, you see, I never had any of these doubts before, but it was all hidden away in me. That these, I think these scientific doubts he's getting back to, right? It was perhaps just because I... Because ideas I did not understand were surging up in me that I used to drink and fight and rage. It was to stifle them in myself, to steal, steal them, to smother them. Ivan is not Rakitin. There, there is an idea in him. Ivan is a sphinx and is silent. He's always silent. It's God that's worrying me. That's the only thing that's worrying me. What if he doesn't exist, right? And then, and then he goes on to say, well, of course he has to because yeah. otherwise everything would be lawful and we'd have nobody to love and nobody to sing a hymn yeah. to. Yeah, but, and- but I think this... This portrayal that he gives, drinking, fighting, raging, this is like, this is the modern man, right? I mean, yeah. this is what he lives. Why does he drink and fight and rage? Here's Dimitri's explanation. Because there's an idea that's hidden inside of you that maybe God doesn't exist. And it's it's being sort of like beaten into you by, by the entire yeah. environment of, of modernity. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of that that you beat that 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 you act the way you do that you fight yeah. and drink and do drugs yeah. and yeah. and join gangs and whatever happens in the modern world that that, that didn't happen to the degree in, in previous worlds it's to stifle this atheism that's rising within you that you can't stop so do you think you, and, and, and do you think it does that 
That is, it stifles it by pr trying to give give like a replacement deity. Like, is that is that what it is, or is it mere just distraction? I don't know. I, I yeah. I mean, it, I mean, maybe, maybe when you said or, distraction, I thought T. S. Eliot. Yeah. Um, but I think it's the distraction. It's here it seems to me. But you can explain your, yeah. your position. Yeah, your I mean, I don't know if I have one. Uh, but here it seems to me that this comes right on the heels of his I exist paragraph, right? Yeah. And so it seems to me that it's a stifling of the question of being, right? I mean, it, it, it's the heart of, it seems that it's the, the heart of the modern problem. Man, this is like a new evangelization class here. Yeah. The heart of the yeah. modern problem that man is is made by his environment and the and and the things that he does and the things that he surrounds himself with he is made incapable of wonder or or thinking about the mystery of being and the fact that i'm in it right, right? and the yeah. fact that i am i constitute it in some sense and so it seems to me that all of this stuff that 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 you surround yourself with Wait, as in you, I mean like us, like all yeah, of us yeah. post-industrial moderns. We surround ourselves with, they they are the ones that start to, to bring up in the heart a question of atheism. And that and therefore the only way to sort of stop that, because we what we could do is like transform society and, and live, in, live in a truly human way connected with nature and all, all the things that we always talk about. Right? Yeah, sure. but, but, but that's a huge deal and you have to do that in a cooperative, communal, loving way. And, and it's too hard. So instead we just drink and rage. Yeah. But you had another idea. No, no, I've, I, I just have a lot of a lot of thoughts about this, and I don't know if now is the best time. To, um, <laughs> well, I mean, depends. I, I, I really, I mean, I think that's, I think that's a, that's, this is an in, incredibly interesting, I haven't thought about this. So, so we talk about the problem of, of, of evil, which is really the problem of suffering, for, mm -hmm. for most people. Mm -hmm. um, what's mm -hmm. the meaning of suffering? And, and that's and how exactly can, how Ivan's Rebellion chapter portrays it. Yeah, right. So how, how can we, how can we, how can we um, endure existence with, with suffering? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that seems to presuppose that we already have an understanding of existence. So, so maybe, maybe one thing, one way to, to think of this is before you can approach the, the question of suffering or the meaning of suffering, you have to first understand the question of, of existence, the meaning of existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not until you understand the, that question that you're ever going to have any hope of understanding suffering. Yeah, otherwise and, you're asking the question too soon because you haven't gone back the yeah. step to the question of being. Right. And I, and I think what Dimitri maybe is, is honed in on is suffering lets you into this great secret you exist right mm -hmm. i mean it 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 is something that that cannot be um diminished i mean i mean i mean you can try you can try to diminish suffering by by um drink sex yeah scooby-doo <laughs> uh Right, but but that's only going to carry. Candy Crush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for those that are, that are older than that, Minesweeper or something. <laughs> Minesweeper. Oh shoot. <laughs> okay. um, so so I, I but I but I think that that suffering you you try to you try to cope with it or distract yourself from it with something else that's only going to carry with it a new type of suffering or more suffering. So mm -hmm. in some ways, there's mm -hmm. no escape from suffering. Right. Right. No, um, there isn't. And 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 now you can take this in a pessimistic way to say, here's the meaning of existence. It's suffering. It's kind of like a Schopenhauer sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Or um, and therefore existence is just bad. Right. Or you can right. say, no, no, no. I'm not going to interpret existence through the lens of suffering. I'm going to interpret suffering through the lens of existence. But right. you have to realize that you need to. Um, you need to first understand or be attuned to existence, what existence, what your existence is. And so right. uh, maybe that's like, I mean, I don't know, this is, this is me just sort of spouting some, some ideas, but maybe, maybe that is, um, I don't know if you want to say like a, um, suffering is like an apology for, um, for being. Yeah. It like speaks for being. If, 
if you're willing to ask the question of being before the, the question of suffering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. yeah, otherwise, you, it, but, but, but the, here's the great hope is that um, you can only drink so many bottles of booze before you realize booze isn't going right. to get me get me past right. this lonely right. f- suffering feeling. Yeah, but 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 you can still you can still despair into hopelessness and yeah and and, and therefore as 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 comes up in Dostoevsky's books all the time, suicide is always the option. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I don't want to. Don't give it away. No, 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 stop, stop. No. But but you are you are you are you are you are hot on the trail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But here's 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 where I think actually what you're saying links up on page six seventy five. I mean, uh, this this line maybe maybe more than any line in the book made me say this this describes me, uh, and it's right in the middle of six seventy five, uh, a little bit above the middle, I guess. Uh, now I can wait no longer. I must pour out my heart to you, brother. These last two months, I found in myself a new man. A new man has risen up in me. He was hidden in me, but would never have come to the surface if it hadn't been for this blow from heaven. Okay, there you go. There's the second. I am afraid. And what do I care if I spend 20 years in the mines breaking out ore with a hammer? And what was this, real quick, what was this blow from heaven? It was, it was his, this, this whole ordeal he's going through. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's sitting in prison. Yep. Um, He says he's not a bit afraid of the mines for 20 years. It's something else I'm afraid of now. That that new man may leave me. Right when I read that line, I was like, this is like me every other week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I feel within me now a new man rising. And then, I, and then the next week you feel him leaving. Yes, <laughs> and then, yes. And, and I know that it happened last week. And so I yeah. think to myself, oh, he's this is wonderful. Again. But I'm the thing that scares yeah. me most yeah. is that he's going to leave. Yeah. And and that's the great concern, and and so his and I love how he does. I mean, this 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 whole section is a beautiful. Even there in the mines underground, I may find a human heart in another convict and murderer by my side, and I may make friends with him. For even there, one may live and love and suffer. I love how live, love, and suffer all are in some yeah. sense identical. So that's like live, laugh, and love. <laughs> <laughs> put, no, that, yeah, put, put that on your wall. That, get, get a sticker yeah. and put that. On yeah, your yeah. Wall. Make a make a little uh, Hobby Lobby cut out of <laughs> fake wood and put that on your bookshelf. <laughs> see what uh, see what the see what the you know the, the people would would say at Hallmark. Like, I got a great one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine like somebody coming to your house and seeing live, love, suffer on the wall? And then they see some weird gleam in your eye, and then it, and then they run. Um, okay, sorry, I'm sorry to make a joke of this. But. No, but that was actually well done. It was it was completely worth the, the pause. Okay, so keep it going here. Okay, one may thaw and revive a frozen heart in that convict. One may wait upon him for years. This convict, this murderer, he called him. Right? Yeah, yeah. And at last, bring up from the dark depths a lofty soul, a feeling, suffering creature. One may bring forth an angel, create a hero. There are so many of them, hundreds of them, and we're all to blame for them. Here it comes again, right? Yeah. Why was it that I dreamed of that babe at, at such a moment? Why is the babe so poor? That was a sign to me at that moment, for it's the babe I'm going. It's for the babe yeah, I'm going, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we are all responsible for all. For all the babes, there are, are, are big children as well as little children. All are babes. I go for all. Right? And he talks about this joy that he feels, and he says, "You know what's going to happen?" And this this last last section is is wonderful at the end, where he says, "Man should be God gives joy; it's his privilege, a grand one. Right? Great in great sorrow, we shall arise again to joy." This is this is what Osama said to, to, to Alyosha when he told yep. him, "You're leaving, yeah. you're leaving the monastery, and there's going to be great sorrow in your life, but you will live joy in it." Yeah. It, that, so, so here we have Dimitri Zosima and the, and the advice Zosima gave to the old woman whose uh, son whose son, son died. died yeah. yeah, yeah. So he says it's his privilege, a grand one, to give joy. Right, that's his privilege. A man should be dissolved in prayer. What a great line! What should I be underground there without God? Rakitin's laughing. If they drive God from the earth, we shall shelter him underground. One cannot exist in prison without God, which which Dostoevsky spent time in prison. Right? Yeah. It's even more impossible than out of prison. And then we men underground will sing from the bowels of the earth a glorious hymn to God with whom is joy. Hail to God and his joy. I love him. What a line, man. Oh, no. So here, here's, here's how God's going to be saved. 
in the suffering murderers underground in the mines. Yeah. And you're like, dude, no, those are the people that don't believe in God. Those are the people that, that, that rejected God by their murder. And he says, no. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh-huh. this is Jesus going into yeah. the, into the, uh, to the prostitutes and tax yeah. collectors, right? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, there's, there's something, there's, there's, there's this I- identity or, or some, some, some profound ontological link between love and suffering, <laughs> live, love, suffer, yeah. Yeah. love and suffering yeah. and joy and, and, and unity with God, yeah. right? And, and, and Dimitri seems to have touched that because his, mm. his new man that he's afraid mm. is going to leave him won't leave him when he goes down into the mines. In fact, there is where he'll really find joy, right? Yeah. Um, but, he, but he's really just, I think he's just worried that, 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 that atheism, you know, nihilism is in us all. And it's yeah. always eating us away. Yeah. And I think it's a modern problem. And this is why, this is why we all need support groups for nihilism, which, which I call friendship. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it, and, and it you have your like nihilistic this. accountability partner. Yeah. I started <laughs> believing in nothing again today, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Can you help me? Uh, we need to go play a game of chess. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or uh, you need to beat me in a game of chess yeah, so that yeah, I yeah. suffer and then I start yeah. remembering that, right? Yeah. Um, but here's – so that – this this whole conversation, I love how this begins. This is incredible. So it begins. No, I didn't go back far enough, huh? I mean, just just a few lines. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, top of the six seventy five. Yeah. Um, right. He he went up to Alyosha excitedly and kissed him. His eyes glowed. Rakitin wouldn't understand it. He began this sort of exaltation. But you, you'll understand it all. That's why I was thirsting for you. You see, there's so much I've been waiting, wanting to to, to tell you. For ever so long, yada yada yada, and he goes on into this. So, but it, it's all prefaced by Rakitin's not going to understand this. Right. Like I, I can't talk to anyone about this because they don't understand me. Right. But you, I know you will understand me. Right. And Grushenka doesn't and, understand him. Yeah, Grushenka doesn't. She doesn't understand what the babe is. Yeah. Why, she doesn't get what's going on. Who's the babe? Yeah. Right. And then, and then here, here, um, the, this, this, this chapter begins with Ivan spouting the Rakitin lines. Uh, of of you know why he's here, why he's suffering, why he thinks this way about God, right, why, right, right, and 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 it's all it's all like here's one way to understand Dimitri and why Dimitri's in prison, right, and then here's this other way. Rakitin has no hope of ever understanding this, but Alyosha, right, Alyosha will, right. and actually before um, somewhere in here when they're talking about the tales, somewhere um, Alyosha says, no, "I don't know, I don't understand that," or. He, he puts it he puts it like that way like uh yeah um i forget where, where he says it right here at 673 in order to determine this question this is quoting R- rakitin oh, it yeah. is above all essential to put one's personality in contradiction to one's reality do you understand that no i don't yeah, <laughs> yeah no i don't get i don't that. understand either i don't get that like, I don't get he that. says he says i don't get it either yeah yeah which shows you that that dimitri doesn't even he's not buying any of the stuff that he's yeah, saying but, that rakitin yeah but but i think and and, and i think this is why 672 happens and then 675 happens because the new man that may leave him how will the new man leave him what will replace him tails in the brain that's what's going to replace him yep. right so why does he bring this stuff up and say it to Alyosha in a way that he's sorry to lose God because this is the threat to the new man this is going to chase him away right here yeah. and it's not like um, you know you could just deny that that stuff is 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 out there and just say no i believe i believe in this um because he said this this is eating away at him right yeah. that the the non-existence of god because of science is yeah. eating away at him so much that he's worried now he he doesn't believe it now i don't think yeah. he believes it now yeah. but yeah. but you can tell here yeah. in this in this movement from page to page in this that, yeah. that the temptation is there, and yeah. this is the great worry that he yeah. has. Because once that temptation comes in, if he falls to that temptation, it's the death of joy, it's the death yeah. of God, it's the death of yeah. love, it's the death of everything. Yeah. Right? And then he becomes Smertikov, the yeah. stinking son of stinking it's, Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we, we end by saying a word or two about the, 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 two, the two visits that Dmitri, yeah. or that, sorry, Ivan has with with Smirnov. Yeah, which which is introduced by uh, this revelation that that Alyosha seems to get which he says directly from God that you Ivan think that you killed the father and I'm telling you from God you did not. Yeah. 
Um, but as we see throughout the interviews, this is actually his exact worry. Yeah, yeah. That he is it's... more of a murderer than anyone, right? Yeah. Because he mm. and and really he admits it, right? I left. I left. Why did I leave? And and then remember, and, and this goes back to the to the line um, at the end of of his train trip to Moscow, where he said, "I am a scoundrel." Yeah. Right. And what yeah. was that? It was an admitting to himself that there was something in his heart yeah. that made him leave and, so that his father could be killed. Yeah, and uh, he, 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 he was leaving, and it said something like he was leaving because he wanted to become a, a new, he was a new become man. A new man. Yeah. Put away the whole past. Uh, to a new life, new places, no looking back. 310. Um, 310. And then he said, I am a scoundrel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so so Because he, he knew that, 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 that in some sense that was all crap and that when he was talking, remember he, when he, whenever he talked to Smerdyakov before he left, he kept saying things to him. And he's like, why did I say that to him? And it was a revelatory thing. I'm really going, just so yeah. you know. Right? And so, uh, well, maybe I'm jumping ahead here, but, but Smerdyakov reads that in a particular way. Yep. And uh, I don't know that Ivan necessarily meant him not to as strongly yep. as he should yep. have. Yep. Yep. Right? There's, this, there's a psychological and, question of, of how deep was he. And involved in this right but but you but when when dimitri's kicking the snot out of <laughs> out of old old man karamazzo right and and i even afterwards says it's a shame that he didn't do that uh because it would be just as good for one how do you put it reptile, one reptile to, to, devour to devour another, another. Yeah. yeah which comes up again in this yeah in this, so right? so uh did did ivan in some sense want his father dead um kind of i mean he says he did yeah yeah i mean i mean he said he said then he's saying now this is why he's feeling so bad about himself yeah and so then and then this what you get is this question am i responsible for my father's murder i think he cannot not ask that question yeah which interestingly means that he is open to the question or no, not the question. He's open to the possibility that I am responsible for for what happened. Right. I mean, he, right. I don't, which is which is an opening of the door to. I mean, he did. Markle understand. He didn't. He didn't swing whatever smashed the skull of of, of old man Karamazov. Right. Because he was away in Chermoshnia. Right. Know. Right. But now he was in Moscow. He Moscow, didn't go to Chermoshnia. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's but, where Dmitri was. That's where Dimitri was. <laughs> um, so he knows he didn't do that, but yet he still thinks I'm responsible right. for that. Right. And and so much so that, that he is sort of plagued by whether or not he actually is the murderer. Right. Which is which is why in the second visit on page six ninety nine he mentions uh, Smerdyakov mentions uh, I I won't tell anybody about our conversation at the gate. And the conversation at the gate was when he was leaving, uh, yep. from what I remember, yep. and he was like, I am going. I'm leaving tomorrow. There's no way I will not leave tomorrow, just so you know, right? Yeah. Um, so there's, there's, this, there's, this, there's this question of, 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 of and, he, and he, kind of, he, he kind of yells at him. What, what are you talking about at the, at the gate? Um, what is this something else you're talking about, page 700? The something else I meant, this is Smerdyakov, was that you probably too were very desirous of your parents' death, and then he jumps up and knocks him down. Yeah. Um, but he jumps up and knocks him down, and and of course you know Dostoevsky is like a master of sort of psychology here, uh-huh. because he's 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 feeling that exact thing that he just said. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. That, that that I was desirous. That's for that's him. that's verification. Yeah, 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 and so I, you know, that's the and and. and it continually goes back to this question, and Smerdyakov knows that he's really thinking about this, right? And he's trying to to sort of lead Ivan into his own despair of his responsibility to his father, which in in I don't know what happens in the future here, but which which like you put it is an opening to taking responsibility for the sins of man. Yeah, yeah, and. Um yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he says it. He says it to himself here. Um, when Ivan was was sitting in the cottage, getting angry, page seven of three. Um, and in fact, why did I set off for Chermashnya? 
then. What for? What for? Ivan asked himself. Yes, of course. I was expecting something, and he's right. And he remembered for the hundredth time how on that last night in his father's house he had listened on the stairs. But he remembered it now with such anguish that he stood still on the spot as though he'd been stabbed. Yes, I expected it then. That's true. I wanted the murder. I did want the murder. Did I want the murder? (laughs) Did I want it? I must kill (laughs) Smerdyakov. I mean, this is Karamazov passion at its best. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so the so, so the listening on the stairs was, I didn't even I didn't maybe maybe this isn't right, but it seems like I, I'm, I'm realizing this for the first time right now was listening to hear if he was going to get killed if, right then if he was being killed, yeah, or if he and had and, and in a sense hoping, yeah, three oh five, oh my um, gosh, we're going back and okay. why he had done all this that is standing out in the on the hall for five minutes. Why had done all this? Why he was listening? He could not have said that, quote, action. It's interesting he puts it in scare quotes. That action, all his life afterwards, he called infamous. And at the bottom of his heart, he thought of it as the basis action of his life. Huh. Yeah, I remember reading that. I mean, I highlighted it here. I'm, I'm looking at my my highlights. But I remember thinking, why? <laughs> why, yeah. why, why? Why just listening? Yeah. Like, was it because you were snooping? But obviously it seems to be something, and, and it's, when it's brought up back here on 703, it seems to be that he was listening to hear if he was being killed without having an intention of going in there and saving him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. almost, and this is the big question in these interviews, almost as if he had uh, asked without asking that his mother, his father get murdered. So I think... The th- it, this comes out a little more explicitly in the third interview, but I think uh, w- the, the the proposition on the table is that you can intend something without explicitly stating the words "I intend to X." Right. I, I mean, right. For those wanting to get down and dirty with this, Elizabeth <laughs> Anscombe wrote this great book on on that. Yeah. And that intentions are sometimes things that you don't have to state. They, they they play themselves out in action. Interesting. Right? Yeah. So so that what the intent so and it all had to do with this this debate about double effect. Oh, I didn't intend to kill these people. I just pulled the trigger and let the bullet fly through the air. But I didn't intend to kill them. Yeah. Um, and she said she thought people were being too like loosey goosey with this notion of intention. As if it was this very conscious chosen yeah. to to have act. an intention you had you had to you had to be able to put in in writing and get a notary to say yep you intended this yeah. right yeah. the yeah. intentions aren't aren't like that right right they can be split second things right um, and they, that, or or they can be kind of uh, amorphous exactly feelings yeah. Yeah, that 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 motivate you towards things. Yeah, right? and so so maybe um, feelings is a bad word, but but some but that, sort of yeah. like yeah, non, um, you know, uh, like you couldn't have put it on a piece of paper if somebody asked yeah. you to, and yet it was there, and you were freely, it's like a disposing towards. Yeah, and yeah. you were freely, yeah, freely doing. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And if at any moment someone said, "Are you trying to kill your father?" You would say, "Heck no." Yeah, I'm not trying to kill my dad. But only. 400 pages later. Yeah. Do you say, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe. I actually, I maybe think I, I was, was. Right? As he puts it here, right? 704. If it's not Dmitri, but Smerdyakov, who's the murderer, I share his guilt for I put him up to it. Whether I did, I don't know yet. But if he's the murderer and not Dmitri, then of course I'm the murderer too. And so what does he do? Runs to Katya and says, is Dmitri really the murderer? And she pulls out the letter, right? On, oh, on, the, on the nasty bar sheet, oh, right? Uh, yeah. And the letter, man, it is conclusive proof. I mean, if you need conclusive proof, it seems yeah. like it, right? Yeah. 704, 705 is where we get the letter, right? Um, and so Ivan, there's one point where Ivan was convinced, he said he was convinced that Dimitri had done it. And it seems like this should have been something that was sad in his life because Dimitri is his own brother, but he was happy. And, and, and it doesn't explain until a few pages later. The reason that he's happy is because if Dimitri did it, then Smerdyakov didn't do it. If Smerdyakov didn't do it, then he's not as guilty yep. as he thought. Yep. Yep. Right. And so it's really about him. So yeah, yeah. So so what's what's at stake here is who who committed the murder uh, is going to it's going to determine whether or not Ivan is, sees himself as implicated or not just implicated, but behind the whole thing or not. Right. Um, right. And, and and behind the whole thing. Being really, ultimately, 
the true one who's responsible, which is why yeah. Alyosha had this weird, you know, divine revelation to him. You're not responsible. Yeah. Um, and he's, yeah. and that's the exact thing that he's yeah. concerned with. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so, so this is, this is, this is Ivan wishing that his brother had committed the murder. Yeah. Uh, Madame Holokov w- was wishing that Dmitri committed the murder. Um, the police chiefs, Inspectors all wishing Dimitri did it. Right. Right. And right. Really. And Dimitri just wishing to suffer for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah. I mean, it's it's exactly what he wants to go to Siberia. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He wants to go to Siberia because of responsibility. Uh, yeah. But but there there's a lot more, but we have to um, we have to end. Well, it depends on what you mean by a lot. We're at page seven oh seven here, and we're only going well, to page. <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot quality, not quantity. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like uh you know high high proof you can have you can have a lot of a lot of a lot of content in, oh, in, high in, a, proof. in a single shot i thought you were yeah. talking like logic there yeah. <laughs> or, or it's like russian chant it's, it could be like russian chant which is um also <laughs> high proof. a lot 